So welcome back everybody. Thank you for being here still. Um, we come to our last um, last event for today, which is the roundtable discussion on Bruce Lee and uh, martial aesthetics before and after him. Okay, I would like to um, introduce Katja Pessel from the uh, Center for Modern East Asian Studies here uh, at Göttingen University, Professor Paul Bowman from Cardiff University, uh, Valentin Moring and Charlotte Böttcher from the Institute of Sports Science uh, representing the students uh, at this roundtable discussion. Um, I want to welcome also um, Dr. Martin Meyer from uh, Fechter University and Martin Minerick, myself. Um, and what we would like to talk about now is um, basically um, three different topics, I would say. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, the first, um, first category of, of questions would be Bruce Lee and aesthetics. Um, then Bruce Lee and ideology. And finally, martial arts movies after Bruce Lee. So what the future of martial arts movies might look like. And um, I would like to start with, uh, with the topic um, Bruce Lee and aesthetics and um, especially what, what the aesthetics of kicks are or might be. <laughs> you look at me. Yeah, uh, or, uh, or whoever would like to answer. I, th I think that kicks are beautiful to look at and there's the, the concept that, that Max, if Max had been able to make it and didn't have COVID, wanted to talk about, which is so more aesthetic. And it's the, I think there's something unique about the feeling of doing a nice hike. Like you're a Taekwondo a Taekwondo mm. practitioner, and you know how beautiful it is to do a, a, some kind of an arcing kick that comes out and hits the target, even if that target's just one of those slap Taekwondo yeah. things. Or well, especially if it's someone's head and you're in the spot. There's something quite beautiful about the feel of that and you know you know it's gonna work, but it's so fast. I think that there's a delight in that that has to be called so more aesthetic. And it, it's there's a kind of jouissance. There's lots of different ways you could describe this. And obviously to watch it it's that it's fully spectacular in a way that something like grappling, ground fighting, wrestling isn't. Like, it takes a lot of literacy to understand, mm. say, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or wrestling. Because you're just looking at people going, what, what are they, what actually is happening there? But it's very easy to see a big, beautiful, fully extended hit. Right. I think there's something about that which makes, it's kind of, um, the, and also, because like Savat is quite a, a stylish and elegant thing, but it hasn't got the mythos or the kind of, the kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, frisson, the kind of mystique mm. of something that's meant to be ancient Asian, blah, 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 blah. That, so the whole right. Orientalism comes yeah. in there yeah. as well, I think. So, so we have two, uh, two perspectives there, I think. So one perspective is the perspective from the, the person who watches, right, who, who watches the kicks, and then the perspective of the person who executes the kicks, right, what what they feel, what they experience about that. Um, yeah, and the person who gets kicked. Yeah, and the person who gets kicked. <laughs> yeah. But I, from, my, from my perspective, I can say that um, kicking has some, some joyful feeling, this joyfulness, you know, this, uh, especially when you do this, uh, this high jumping kicks and consecutive kicking and, and what you mentioned, this, uh, this kicking mitts, when you strike them really nicely, they make such a beautiful sound and this, this elevates you even more and you're like bam 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 and then one more bam 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 it's just it, 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 it puts the pressure up, uh, the pressure not the pressure but the, the energy up yeah um, yeah it's a delightful moment so maybe maybe you too you um, you were uh, in the uh, in the university course mm -hmm. uh, fighting right so we, we did we did kicking we yes. did Punching, how, how did you experience that? Did you uh, tell us about the university course first? What, yeah. is, what is the course? Yeah, basically, the, the, the course is it's, it's part uh, of the practical courses for sports students at our, at our institute, and um, we have different 
let's say sporting areas like ones like for example ball games or uh, individual uh, mm, sports or uh, mm, team sports and one area among those is fighting or combat it's it's difficult to translate because it's martial arts maybe. martial arts yeah it's it's basically aimed for um, for PE teachers mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's meant to be in their curriculum and to be also taught in um, in schools then and uh, I decided to uh, to structure this this course not by um, practicing one specific martial art but to to structure the course um, according to different um, distances and for each distance we recovered uh, different uh, types of techniques so for the long distance we had kicking obviously for the uh, medium range uh, distance we had boxing or punching and so on and so on so my question would be like if, if you if, if you uh, can recall um, a difference in, in feeling or a difference in uh, how it felt to kick or to punch was it something something different yeah i would like to start on that and um, personally for me it was really different doing something with my feet for once you know because normally um you would do also in judo and throwing people or submitting people in bjj or anything you mostly do with your hands or arms or upper body uh, of course there are some chokes with the legs um but for me it was really nice as a change to be able to do something with my feet like apart from just walking on them mm -hmm. yeah, and running and then also um, what I really like about kicking is the power you can develop you know I mean obviously a really well thrown punch is really powerful and effective but I personally always feel like um, a good kick um, tops that on the power level and also maybe the control you can develop just because you have more force and Mm. Um, one thing I also noticed doing it was when you look yourself um, or when you see yourself in the mirror, you, um, you look more like the image you get from combat sports mm. because, I don't know, even a karate um, club would have a logo where somebody would kick and punch maybe at the same time. In the movies you see Bruce Lee flying around the place all the time and now kicking somebody. Um, and so I think those three factors were like uh, in my mind doing um, kicking, um, which I did not get throwing punches or throwing kicks. No. Mm. Do you have any other perspective? Maybe? Or was it for you because you didn't didn't have that much combat sports martial arts experience as I did? Well, like for um, I mean, yeah, I think the um, most of the difference is that you uh, did judo and I never had this. Um, Throwing mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, for me, it was very uh, nice to to um, get more precise with the kicks, um, and also the stability in the stand when I finished the kick, it uh, increased very very fast. And mm. It was a really nice feeling and gave me um, like a feeling of more safety when I'm, uh, I stood against uh, my partner or something. And um, yeah, also uh, what you mentioned, the, the beauty of the, the kids, mm -hmm. um, I think especially for the schools, it can be very motivating for the students to, um, to see what, yeah, what, then, what they can create. Um, this is like a really good outcome. Mm. You mean like for the school children when you, when you teach the martial arts or kicking in the, in the school curriculum, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because... Uh, Often in, in schools, you have to uh, motivate the students, and when you have uh, something, yeah, <laughs> and when you have something that looks so beautiful in the end, uh, you can create like a project or something. For example, we had a um, like a cutter in the end. We should create ourselves by ourselves, hmm. and um, yeah, you can um, make it very beautiful. Right. Well, try to. <laughs> so the difficulty of kicks is, but it's separates from punching. You said uh, in the presentation, Paul, that um, first context um, with the word with martial arts, that people didn't see boxing as martial arts. But when kicking came into it, okay, this is martial art, this is easy, recognizable. So kicking is like mastery of martial arts, or at that time, um, without rapping, it seemed to be martial arts because, you know, 
you have strength, dexterity, precision, so it's much more complicated doing kicks properly than doing strikes properly. So this might be some kind of which uh, unbolts the uh, aesthetics that when you watch it, you know how difficult this is. Even in the uh, scene um, Enter the Dragon, when the bad guy enters the room of Bruce Lee and he stands there only holding his feet up, mm -hmm. everyone says, whoa, okay, this is really, really hard to do. Mm -hmm. And he, he's not kicking, he's only standing there. So this is where we can see this is really, really difficult to do kicks properly. And I was thinking when you're saying that, uh, I like to see, I like comedy fights as well in films. So like if you remember the fight in Bridget Jones' Diary, mm -hmm. and you watch how terrible these untrained people are at fighting. And it's like when you watch someone learning how to kick, to do a decent kick, like, they lose their guard. That's all like, okay, we're fighting. I'm going to do a kick. <laughs> and then we're fighting again. And it's like... The, the fact that it all has to come together. So when you see a good kick and someone maintains their guard and their kicks up and they haven't just like put their head out for mm -hmm. display, it, there's something profound. Oh, and when you can do that yourself as well and you know you've done that because you've, you've learned to re to reposture so that you're, you're strong in, a, in an artificial position, there's something really, and then you see that on an image like in a mirror you know, because we all, mm. we've all done it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, me, how many of us still, right? When, I mean, I'm 52 years old, and there's a, there's a window or something, so you're reflecting, stop, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always just, like, chatting, <laughs> no shadow box. Anyway, like, I knows a little bit about this in the mirror stage. Mm. But, mm. But, but what all of you mentioned is, like, the aesthetics of kicks. Which leads me to you know a question that's related to my field, like movies, and um, this is also something we discussed today. Like the aesthetic of kicks is so strong, and everyone knows exactly ah, this is martial arts kicks. Mm -hmm. So in the end, is is you know is it only for the aesthetics, or is it a real means of you know martial arts? And uh, I think you also spoke about Bruce Lee's kicks today. Mm -hmm. um, so, and is, is it necessary to differentiate between a real kick and the kind of aesthetic kick? Mm -hmm. or, or do you say, like, well, it's not necessary to do that at all? I think it's one of those things um, where you can... It's like this... There's things that... So my, one of my instructors used to say, possible but not probable. So it'd be like, well, I'm going to use this technique and it's say, hmm, you know, it's high risk. Yeah. A head kick in a, in a serious fight is high risk, but it can work. And you see these dramatic techniques done in yeah. the UFC where mm -hmm. someone's going to do a spinning <clears throat> elbow and it's never been done before and then it's done and someone's going to do, they're going to do a matrix kick off the side of the cage and they're going, don't, don't try and do that. Yeah. You know? And then they do it and it's like, wow. And then mm -hmm. it in, increases the, the, yeah. the theatricality of it. Um, that's a good, that, that's a good uh, term or good were in this case, I think, theatricality. Yeah, so those kicks are theatrical in a way, but that doesn't mean that they cannot hit properly, right? But it just, uh, it's possible but not probable? Or how, how That's what my instructor used to say. If I wanted a kick high, or if I, want, if I was doing something, you'd say, because mm. it's high, a high kick and you, you're unbalanced and it could be grabbed yeah. and it could miss and you could, you've got to correct yeah. yourself afterwards. So it's impossible, but yeah. not probable. Like it's more yeah. probable if you do a shin kick or a knee kick. There is a um, um, a theatre anthropologist. His name is Eugenio Barber. I don't know if you ever came across him, and he he tried something like defining the core principles of um, th theatrical traditions worldwide, and he tried to like analyze different traditions of dancing and acting and whatever and he he tried to 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 boil it down to specific principles um, and for him the the um, the connecting idea or the connecting thing is um, the one of extra daily performance or extra extra daily behavior that that it's something that that is derived from 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 daily behavior but it's something on top right and when you think of, of kicks, for example, you could say that when, when you kick, the, the kick itself is extra daily because in, in everyday life, 
you normally you wouldn't use your your feet in that way. So you can call every kick you can call extra daily in a way probably I would say. But then again you have like a second um, second layer of theatricality probably where where um, you don't derive it from this um, let's say everyday activities, but from the martial activities, the combat activities, and then when when you when when you call the the low kick, for example, uh, a daily martial activity, then the high kick is an extra daily martial activity. So this is another another layer or another perspective of of theatricality you have in kicks, I think. And obviously, Bruce Lee did a lot of yeah. you know, high kicks, which which was yeah. quite different from the films that we we saw yeah. uh, like before, like for Brothers films, where it was more staged, like the opera fight, and then suddenly there was a Bruce Lee with this new form of kick. So how did this come about? Mm. I mean, if you you know, in terms of Bruce Lee's personal biography, you know, he was literally born into a theatrical performance family. And he he was he was a child actor, and he studied it all of his life, and and he you know he lived he lived and breathed fight choreography, camera angles, and, and also but he was also a very he was a completely serious martial artist. So he was all about how do you put power into this technique. So he would study Muhammad Ali, and he would study boxers and fencing, and, um, and then he, combining that like how do you put and then how do you sell a technique mm. to an audience? Where should the camera be? There's, there's camera angles and techniques that, that Bruce Lee used that have become um, stock kind of um, stock setups mm. in, in the choreography and performance of it. But he was just a, he was a superb performer, a superb athlete. So, you know, that's, that's where it all comes from. And so you get this loop where you even get people who were inspired by Bruce Lee to go on and become athletes and, and so there's a there's a, a biography of Bruce Lee by um, Davis Miller called the, the Tower of Bruce Lee and he quotes people who, who, who were boxers who learned how to put power into their punches after seeing Bruce Lee and trying to copy the stuff on screen so it's it's quite a complicated loop. But we had this interesting discussion yesterday in the mm. movies when uh, we saw Enter the Dragon and there were lots of laughs in the audience, yeah. you know, it was like, ah, 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 when Bruce Lee was doing this and that. And there was uh, a guy in the audience who said, why do you do that? This is not, you know, to laugh. It's not a comedy. It's serious. Because you mentioned power, you know. And he saw the power and the kung fu and, and, and all the energy that Bruce Lee put into his movements. But the vast majority of the audience took it for some sort of exaggerated, theatrical, mm. you know, uh, I don't know opera kind of acrobatics. So I wonder how how the you know the reception can be so different um, depending on who sees Bruce Lee mm. doing things. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, in so story did has you, it. So did you laugh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. Me too. Did, me too. Did. What did you laugh at? Like you went facial expressions sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just also to some comic situations where, um, like, um, the one lady mentioned um, the appearance of the grandmaster of the island, uh, yeah. Akon Han, I think, Han, yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah, where everything just froze, and um, yeah. yeah, he was the sumo wrestlers in the sumo wrestlers 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 froze wrestlers. instantly. Yeah, and then only apples were flying, you know, yeah. and um, those situations uh, I loved that, but those are not comic situations. Um, I just can't think of one right now, but there are there are some examples um, where I've laughed definitely. Yeah. And just because of those mm. facial expressions, also the sound sometimes. Yeah. Really. Like some some of um, some men described it as a dying little kitten. Um, you know, mm. the sounds he mm. or somebody made at some point. And yeah, I found it. I found a comic uh, and, and the kind of sense of comedy in there mm. because I think it is over exaggerated. Or what would you guys think, practicing martial arts, would you ever do such sounds? I know, I think that's cinematic, and I yeah. think that it quickly mm. became the cinematic cliche. So when yeah. when, when mm. Bruce Lee was first seen, and he was doing this really eccentric mm -hmm. stuff, it's like, what the hell is that? But it was amazing. 
But now it's a cliche. You're like, you know, you walk mm-hmm. past children's playgrounds and mm-hmm. there'll be two children. One will be doing Bruce Lee noises. Mm-hmm. They don't know why they're doing that, but but they are. Yeah. Um, and it immediately became cliche comedy, like, you know, mm-hmm. and it became parody. Um, yeah. been, and so yeah, you're, you're seeing for the first yeah. time something that came out in 1973. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was then new and like, wow, is. It's like when, you know, you see, like, special effects over the ages, we look back now and go, at the animation in, like, yeah. Clash of the Titans or something like that. Yeah. At the time, it blew people's minds. And then now we've got Cla- Clash of the Titans and skeletons coming up to, see, yeah. you know. Um, and it looks ridiculous to us. And, and, like, the sound of flesh hitting flesh, and it sounds yeah. like a, someone slapping something yeah. like yeah. <laughs> But also Polo Jan, the muscle guy from the movie, you know, he, he entered like uh, the stage and he was like, his facial expressions, I mean, a lot of people in the audience, they had to laugh immediately and then he was juggling his breast muscles mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah. geez, why, you know, is this comedy or is this serious now? And also when, uh, when he fought, I think Ropa, there was, there were like a wrestling on the ground basically and then the facial expressions uh, like, you know, so it, it it felt like, and it was in slow motion, I think, mm-hmm. even, which mm-hmm. made it more hilarious to watch. Yeah, we had a big discussion going mm-hmm. on, and I um, we couldn't make out if it was related to age or you know mm-hmm. how often you've seen the movie, how often you've seen Bruce Plotation, uh mm-hmm. content, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, there, I have a question. Um, mm-hmm. I read once that the contemporary mm-hmm. audience laughed when the three fighters. Um, shows the women. So the black guy, I need three or four women, okay, mm-hmm. he's the black guy. Mm-hmm. The white guy, he chooses one woman, he's pretty loyal, and Bruce Lee character, no, I don't need a woman. So the Hong Kong audience loved, especially at this moment, that he did not choose a woman because he's Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. Is it a myth or is it true? Well, the only thing that I know about the reception of, mm-hmm. of that film is that, so in his previous films, it was, it was very popular in, in Hong Kong. But in Enter the Dragon, the reception was one of anger because he plays, so Hong Kong being the crown colony of, uh, of Great Britain, and then Mr. Braithwaite comes mm-hmm. and asks and recruits Bruce Lee to like, what, mm-hmm. you know, Her Majesty's Secret Service, mm-hmm. to go off and be a spy. And, to, and they were outraged because basically Bruce Lee sold out to the British colonial police and and they didn't like and I heard um, yeah, this a report a that they arc, right? yeah, yeah so so whereas the earlier films where he always plays a kind of Chinese hero in this he's playing a kind of a, an agent for the British and it, mm. it, it was not received well mm. uh, and I heard I read somewhere that they would slash the seats in the cinema oh, with really? knives because to, to demonstrate their disapproval of the film I do not I don't know about the laughing yeah, I, I guess they probably, maybe, maybe they knew a bit about Bruce Lee's reputation mm. uh, as a bit of a womanizer, and the idea mm-hmm. of Bruce Lee going, oh no, I just, I just have this one girl who's a spy. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. Alright, I, I, I got the feeling that we're slowly moving away <laughs> from, from kicks. What? <laughs> um, in a way. Not at all. Um, are... <laughs> but, but maybe let's, let's, let's move back to the topic, right? Because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least a bit. Yeah, um, but what I would like to discuss um, also is um, the way Bruce Lee revolutionized kicking in martial arts movies. Like, what were the kicks also in Hong Kong movies uh, or in, in in Eastern martial arts movies? What were the kicks before him, and what were the kicks after him? Can anybody uh, contribute to that? I think that if you if you look at a film like um, Fist of Fury, mm. which in America was the Chinese connection, wasn't it? And you know, there's the scenes, the training scenes in the Chinese school, the Jingwu school, and, and, and the guys watching them all and nodding. And yeah. you, that kind of choreography that's happening, that kind of the training sequence where there's straight legs and, and stand, yeah. kind of technically good kicks because you're really grounded and there's straight kicks going out and this and that. And then Bruce Lee comes into that, and it's not that it's not deconstructed, but it's retooled. So it's less of the straight lines of the kick and more of the explosive yeah. spiral. I guess that would be the difference between a straight angular shape of a kick 
and it, which ends slap. There's, yeah. It's almost like clack. There's the kick. Whereas with Bruce Lee, it goes smash. The, you know, like like his uppercut hook thing that he would do, mm. spinning off like that. And so there's all that extra energy. Um, in the immediate wake of Bruce, Bruce Lee, in terms of Hong Kong films, I don't know, you know more about this than me. I, mean, mm, I think the, the, what you said also reminds me of the rhythm of the fight choreography. And I think that in the earlier Shaw Brothers movies, um, they were mainly, you know, made in the studio. And the fights were more of a uh, going back and going forth, going left and going right. Um, but Bruce Lee's rhythm is entirely different. Go boom, 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 bam, and then someone is like, done, you know, dealt with. It's, it's, it's not a kind of whole, a wholesome kind of dance, you know, with some kind of rhythm or music. It, it's very fast. And then it's over. Mm. So I think his kicking in this respect is quite different. And, and for me, it, it um, moves away from the kind of opera idea of Chinese Cantonese opera, yeah. wh where there's a staged fight with a certain rhythm that goes yeah. on and on and on. Bruce Lee is just, you know, who? Also, what, what you mentioned, uh, this goes uh, in, in a similar direction, I think, the, uh, the kicks with, the, with the, uh, the, the straighted knee, or how do you say it in English? Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, so rising front, rising yeah. side, rising backwards, right? And Bruce Lee, is, it's, it's not doing that at all, right? He's, there, there is like the, um, the warm-up scene, I think, where he does some leg raises, mm. but only for warm, it's not for, for fighting, right? All the yeah. uh, kicks he uses for fighting are with the, like the, you, you, you take out the knee, then you straighten the leg, and then you take it back, mm. yeah. right? But nothing with... Uh, Completely straight legs from beginning. But the to side kick is the one that you can that you hold for a, a little while. Mm. So like, boom, it's done, and you hold it, and then just. But you don't. He doesn't with his with his, say with his roundhouse kick. That will that'll be like a tie. It'd go all the way around. Yeah. If it if it missed its target, you would have gone all the way around. Come in with another kick. Yeah. Um, but with the side kick, you can go boom, and then yeah. you can either hold it there yeah. or you can hold it there. And I think that he does. I mean, if we could look at them and analyze them a bit and see if what I'm saying is what that mm. I used to do. Like, if you land a good sidekick, yeah, you might keep your leg up behind. Yeah. Just to make yeah. the point. Yeah. Um, just to be a little flash. But I mean, can you say that there were no sidekicks and no roundhouse kicks before Bruce Lee in, in martial arts cinema? No, I don't think we're saying that. I think, I think what I'm saying is it's the way, it's the delivery, the technical mm. delivery. Uh physicality of that delivery. So Bruce Lee was, if we're talking about his intervention into, into say, Hong Kong or, or, or Japanese film, probably initially didn't make that much difference at all. I think that's the consensus. It's like, wow, Bruce Lee films. Anyway, mm -hmm. I wouldn't crack on with what we're doing. Because Bruce Lee was more steeped in um, the Hollywood tradition as well. And, and his influences included, like, you know, the style of Sergio Leone and things like this. Mm. So he would use a lot of the, of the camera angles and the ins and the outs and the yeah. eyes and this kind of thing. And I think that his immediate um, effect was in Hollywood and he massively raised the bar of fight choreography there. And then when Bruce Lee had gone, they, they were, well, we looked around and they were like, well, what have we got? And they went to Dan Inosanto and they went, to, and that's when he started to get Jeff Imada and all of these other fight choreographers coming through who who were, you know, the apple didn't fall that far from the tree. Mm. Some of these amazing fight choreographers who've gone through down in Santos Academy, among other academies, of course. Um, I think that in Hollywood they looked around for something that could be as good as Bruce Lee um, for quite some time. And there was Bruce exploitation, obviously, that was in all different strikes. Right. Um, yeah, and David Carradine tried to be a martial artist, and it's just there's some such embarrassing films made mm. by him. hyper orientalist films. But and uh, you said that the grittiness was new. That uh, it was really um, you said it like on um, physical, and especially when you see doing the the kick, which you showed us in the presentation, which is I think not from Enter the Dragon, but also to the same black belt. So when the black belt approaches him and he mm. snaps. The psychic game. So it's so forceful that Bruce Lee himself has to uh, step back. Yeah. And you see that the weight difference between the two is huge. Yeah. So the black belt is around 100 kilograms. And he himself, Bruce Lee, is around 60 or so. Mm -hmm. So um, you see the force behind that. And you see 
it only works so fast it only um, um, connects because the black ball is approaching for half a second and then this is a perfect distance to kicking yeah. in the and this is great this is the best yeah and I guess that, that, that little that, that little fall backwards as well that little correction like yeah. the, the gymnasts that landed because the sidekick is one that can go very wrong if your foot isn't planted and your weight isn't right if you kick this if you hit a sidekick on someone who's heavier than you and they're not moving, like they're grounded, mm -hmm. if you're not grounded properly, you're going to bounce yeah. backwards, and that's very embarrassing. Yeah. Um, and I've been filmed doing that, and it was put online, and it's very Where is it? You haven't seen it yet. It was a long time ago, all right? <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's, it's still out there. But yeah, so, I, I'm, so I'm sparring with a guy who's, who's heavier than me, and I stepped in for a sidekick, but it was still wrong, and I hit him, and just bounced off, and I go off screen. And... Sorry, but this... <laughs> <laughs> this leads me to another question that um, I thought about uh, yesterday also during Inter the Dragon. We, we're talking about reality and that Bruce Lee's, you know, fights felt more real. So what is what is meant with real? Because in any case, this island of Dr. Han, or not Dr. Han, uh, the <laughs> <laughs> super villain Han, right? It's totally artificial. There, it, it's not real. What, so what, what is the reality? of his kicking, of his, you know, on stage. Because you can, in, in martial arts movies, mm. you, it's relatively easy to fake an impact of uh, ah. um, a strike. So Martin only has to, oh my god, <laughs> wow, wow, and you see it, of course, in the Bruce Lee movies too. But mm. kicking, so when the kick really makes contact, uh, and especially in the Bruce Lee movies like Into the Dragon, um, and especially in the long shot, um, his long, Kick and you see the flex. Um, oh, I guess Dohara. Dohara yeah. um, that you really makes contact with a really powerful kick, and this is not um, mm. the actor. Or so this is real. This is a real kick. So it mm. kicks him into the chairs, and you see an audience. Yeah, everyone was too. laughing mm -hmm. at this point when the chairs were like tumbling, right? Mm. And everyone was ha 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 ha. And so this was also one of the moments where yeah. um, the guy in the audience said, "Why do you laugh?" But it's not. It's not so. Um, it's not so strange to laugh because that yeah. looks like that was accidental. Yeah. So there's a book by a guy called either T M Cato or M T Cato. I can't remember. Mm. It's called From Kung Fu to Hip Hop. Oh. And he, the argument in that book is that some of the argument is a bit phrased quite preposterously, like that's mm -hmm. a moment of the eruption of the real. Um, because that's actually the real power of Bruce Lee. Ah. He wasn't meant to kick him that hard. And it's like, okay, well, maybe not. It looks good anyway. But you can laugh because it does look a little bit like it, it should have been on the outtakes. Mm. Yeah. Real. But it was so good they left it in. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, I mean, comedy's well, comedy's not aesthetic. There were some of those scenes, right? For example, when this one guard, when, when he's walking around swinging the nunchuck <laughs> and he, yeah. Yeah, accidentally he hits yeah. this uh, incense burning lion thing. statue or something. Yeah, yeah. lion statue, yeah. right? I think that's meant yeah. to be a, that, that's meant to be a joke thing, demonstrate his incompetence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know. And there's also mm. the scene in Enter mm. the Dragon, which is also a very interesting camera angle, mm. when you see the bad guy in front and he and kicks him out of the, the image. Yeah. So yeah. there you see the power, and of course, the uh, like spaghetti western sounds, or mm. you yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. bam, and so okay, this is pretty strong. This yeah. is a pretty strong kick. I, I remember a lot of guys in the audience also had a good laugh when they heard the bone breaking or the neck breaking, you know, because it, it sounds like. Mm. And they were like, ha ha ha. And then there was Bolo, he was like squeezing yeah. the one a guy in his arms, and then he was like, dead. You heard the bone breaking, and, yeah. Yeah. and he yeah. fell off Bolo, basically. And so I think they, this was. <laughs> and and in, the, in the cinema, and this is why I think it's so important to, to screen Bruce Lee's movies in a cinema, because it's a big screen and it's good sound, and it's very different to see it in a cinema, in a theater, a movie theater. And um, there's a new dynamic in the movie theater. One person laughs, other, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. other people start laughing too because I watched the movie at home on Blu ray like two days ago. Mm. And it, there was no laughs at home, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at, <laughs> at the screen of my laptop and said, oh, right. yeah, and taking notes. Yeah. So the dynamic of seeing this in a real movie theater. 
But I think the degree of realness which yeah. the contemporary audience experienced mm. that uh, Enter the Dragon is like what we had when we saw On Bark for the first time. So On mm. Bark was also very, very real, and you, you could see that, okay, the uh, are really connecting with their elbow strikes mm. and kicks and so on. Mm. So this is sweetness and it must be pretty shocking at that See, time. I went, mm. I made a mistake with On Back and I heard about it and I watched it, I think I got the DVD or something mm. and I thought it was like Waifu. <laughs> I just watched it I was going, this is just... And then sometime later I heard that there was none of that and it was totally, it was no CGI, it wasn't CGI really, of any kind, there was no wires, there was no, I was like, what? <laughs> and if I'd know, if someone had said this is all legit, there's no wires involved in this, I, it would probably have blown my mind, but it kind of mm. I misinterpreted the choreography yeah. entirely. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah. So you watch the making of, it's more interesting yeah. than the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, So, but what would you say, um, is there a need that we, um, that we need training to interpret? the realness of those movies. So do we need guidelines um, to, to, to help us understand that this is real or is this something that comes natural? Because some people laugh, some, some not. So um, how was it in the movies? Did you understand the realness? I guess you haven't seen Enter the Dragon before. Um, yeah. What, do we need a kind of movie mm. education for martial art movies? I think it was really helpful that you guys uh, mm. introduced the movie and like mm. all the, the facts a little bit, the context mm. um, before screening it. And mm. not just for me, but I feel like for the whole audience, because mm. like you said, we were watching it from a different angle. We were not sitting at home taking notes, mm. but we were there and uh, enjoying the art, enjoying the martial art, enjoying Bruce Lee and um, at his best. Yeah, so I think that helped a lot and maybe, like you just mentioned your example with um, The Wiring and the other mm -hmm. movie, yeah? it helps you to enjoy those movies, the old movies a lot more, as if we are used to a lot of CGI, right now we, there are always some wires involved, maybe just for insurance reasons mm -hmm. or whatever, yeah? um, so I think, yeah, it helps with the old movies and maybe also with modern ones where they don't use CGI mm -hmm. or or um, wires, because I also know that I listen to a podcast that is about cinema a little bit um, and they sometimes review a movie and then I go and watch it because they did a really good review and I liked what they said and then I watch it differently, I enjoy it more because they highlight a little angle maybe or an aspect or whatever but that's just personally for me, I don't know There you can see also the problem of modern martial arts movies because the martial arts itself has changed Mm. To to um, to show the audience how the techniques work. So we're talking about like BJJ techniques, MMA techniques, where you have to have uh, more knowledge to understand what is going on in the screen, and it's more difficult to to show to the amateur audience what is happening right there. So one of the first movies I think which did a very good was Warrior with um, with uh, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy right? Yeah. But, but to, to translate it to the audience it seems to be pretty hard. Yeah, I think there's a, a challenge in... I think that filmmakers are obviously always, especially action filmmakers, they want the next thing mm -hmm. that has to look different and better than what went before. Mm -hmm. So they'll incorporate different styles of fighting mm -hmm. choreography in it and make, make up stuff. And, um, and I think that they struggled for a long time to convey the, the dynamism and exciting, affective kind of charge of grappling and ground fighting. I remember I, I accidentally watched The Expendables. <laughs> I, I had the misfortune of, and I was like, oh God, this is the worst film I've ever seen. <laughs> but I remember they just, in the fight scenes there, which went on for hours, they were a bit like the fight kind of, it's just back and forth yeah. and there. And, and they were just like, there'd be someone... To, just for no reason, a double leg takedown, and then someone do an arm bar, mm -hmm. and someone do a guillotine, and it'd just be like, and then some guns, and it was, they were trying to kind of show the stuff that's been really popular in the UFC, mm -hmm. without actually showing a wrestling around on the ground fight. Um, and it is, it, I think they're learning how to make grappling and ground fighting look good. There's a lot more films with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in it. Yeah, I have, I have actually a question for you then. Um, how did you like uh, John Wick? And yeah, good question. And the stunts and action. I like, I like the first John Wick. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, oh, judo again. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Return to judo. I, okay, yes. I like yeah. that. I really like the judo. And then I, I watched the second John Wick, and I was like, okay. And I think I got about halfway through the mm-hmm. film. <laughs> and there's one where he, which is the one where he finds some nunchakus and uses them. Is that three or four? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I, mean, I, I just, it's, it, it's a, I, there's something about it. I need to, have, I need to think about what it is about John Wick that it just goes over for me. Mm-hmm. It's too ridiculous. Like it always was ridiculous. It always was, right? It's hyper real. It's, it's on the top of the. But there was something. There's some it, for me. It has to be. It's about the fight choreography, and I have to invest in that. So, like some some types of fight choreography, they're just preposterous. Whereas. And they've got any CGI in them and stuff. Like at the one end, you've got like Marvel fight scenes, which yeah, to yeah. me are just, mm-hmm. I don't know what a blast of energy feels like. Yeah. Like, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then at the other end, you've got something like The Raid, with, which has got like rusty machetes mm-hmm. and, and light bulbs and stuff like that. And now I'm more at that end of the scale where they're showcasing um, Indonesian martial arts, Penjak Silat. And they're doing it in a really gritty, horrible mm. way. Um, but there's also it's also get that gets a bit too much when they have that fight in the in the drug on the drug lab level, and it just goes on and on and on. It's like they've taken the drugs themselves. <laughs> um, they're like, come on, come on, we didn't say anything. Yeah, but um, yeah, John Wick. Was, I, I love the judo, and I do like the way they've incorporated Brazilian jiu-jitsu into it. I like that a lot. But the film is okay. me, almost unfortunately. <laughs> the first one, the dog, the wife. The dog is great. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's yeah. also something good coming up. This is one of the later questions, so about just maybe the future of martial art movies. And regarding Germany, um, the, for the John Wick movies, you, you need many, many actors and many, many stunt choreographs and fighters and fighterinos and also. But these are from extremely different countries and some of them are from Germany and they're coming back and doing martial arts movies. So in this way, John Wick spreads into a lot of nations which do their own martial arts movies again. So this is a kind of rise of the German martial arts movie for sure in the last three or four years. So there are several movies coming out of this. Maybe this is yeah. one of the future implications of John Wick. Did yeah. Netflix just um, uploaded like 60 Minutes? Okay. Yes, 60 Minutes is one of them. Yeah. What's that? Uh, I haven't watched it, I just, I've just listened to a review on the podcast I told you about, like the cinematic oh. podcast, and it's um, it's a boxer, I believe, or a martial MMA fight or something. And yeah, he just fights 60 himself. Minutes to, to rescue his daughter, or so or he has to yeah. 60 Minutes to fight something. And he just fights himself through Berlin for some reason to get to his daughter. Sounds watchable. Sounds much more, <laughs> yeah. The cho- the choreography is supposed to be really good, but um, don't um, focus too much on the plot. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but the, this was the same question yesterday in the right, movie yeah. theater. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, forget about the plot, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. focus on other stuff, please. Mm. But it's like I think it's the mm. only German martial arts movie actually, you know, like which comes to my mind. I think, yeah. There was a a like. Maybe 10 or even more years ago, maybe 15 years ago, there was this one German actor and he, there, there was also a TV series where he played something like a warrior monk or something. Do you remember? <laughs> no, 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 no. It was a blonde guy with beard. Yeah. He was like warrior monk. Blonde. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but, <laughs> no, but it wasn't like Shaolin monks or something, but like... European oh, or yeah. German monks or something okay. like that, yeah. and there were like monks. yeah, Christian monks, and there were like warrior monks. Christian oh. warrior monks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty weird. B movie, yeah, B yeah. 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 series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Fist of God. Fist of God. Yeah, Yasuo. Yasuo. The Faust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's an interesting observation yeah. that doesn't seem to be this martial arts movie tradition at all in Germany no. and, and it seems what uh, uh, that you said there's some new opportunities coming up and I recently talked to a friend of mine he's a director he did a documentary about his family he's um, Chinese Vietnamese and German mm. and he's now planning his next movie it's going to be a kung fu movie in Berlin really yeah. it's strange because mm. 
you know, as some of the research mm. that, that the German mm. uh, researchers like Sven and, and Mario and, and, and you have looked into, it's like the, and, and Ben Judkins, if you like this, the, the massive popularity of things like Wing Chun yeah. uh, in, and, and like Shaolin, like the, the Shaolin Temple Europe, like was one, was one of the first ones outside of China, it was in Germany. Mm, yeah. And, and like the uptake of martial arts like Wing Chun is massive in Germany. Yeah. Compared to other European Definitely. countries. And yet there's no, it does, does it find its way onto the screen in Germany? Like that Wing Chun, that Wing Chun tradition? Probably oh, I don't, don't think, so. think so, I don't think so. No, mm. Not at all. But also karate or judo doesn't mm. really find itself represented in German cinema, but we have um, a lot a lot of clubs and really active clubs. Yes, true. It's really, really famous. Mm. Maybe it's also because in Germany there is this um, sports club culture that is that, that you don't have in, in, in other countries mm -hmm. in, in a, to, a, to a similar scale. Maybe this also helped help the, the, the spreading of martial arts in Germany. I don't know. I mean, on the other hand, there's loads of series about um, policemen, like crime right. series, and yeah. series about doctors, like mm -hmm. for uh, 30, 40 years. This is what we see on German TV, actually. Mm. Like every Sunday, it's Tatort. You know? exactly. Everyone knows yeah. Tatort. Everyone knows Schwarzwald Clinic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but back as you see, the yeah. 60 Minutes, and there this was is new. Okay, more yeah. movies about that. Yeah. And this is in... Um, in contrast to the other great motion of martial arts movies mm. like uh, almost saturation because of the MCU, mm. where you yeah, see yeah. in every every movie bad acted martial arts. Mm. So I think there is on the on the mainstream level uh, over saturation, mm. and maybe this is comparable to the time before Uncle Buck came. So Buck and Enter the Dragon mm. came at times when people had enough of over artificialization. Mm -hmm. So we need. The greatest stuff, the real stuff. Maybe this time come back. What do you think? I also think that the only reason why John Wick was so successful in the, the fourth movie right now because you didn't watch it for the plot. Like, at least I did not watch John Wick for the plot, but for the um, um, yeah martial arts displayed there, for the creativity, mm -hmm. um, yeah, for all the factor they took into. Because for me personally, it was the first time that I actually saw. What, what, what is, in my opinion, a really complete um, display of a lot of different styles, you know, not just, mm. I don't know, like Bruce Lee did, obviously, which was a pioneer thing to do at his time, mm. but right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what comes to my mind when you ask about will the real be back on German TV screens or movie screens is that, like, Kung Fu, as I saw it in many of Bruce Lee's films as well, it's related to a class struggle, right? And I, I wonder, because what you said today is, um, well, nowadays, the kind of Qigong and Tai Chi, it's for self-improvement, it's for being, you know, better at your workplace mm. and stuff like that, and purifying yourself. But a class struggle, like, you know, in the big boss, or even a colonial, anti-colonial struggle, this is not about self-improvement or purification. So there's entirely different moments in history, and what we... Mm. <laughs> what we <laughs> what we see in martial arts. So I wonder how would a German uh, kung fu movie look like today? Is it about you know migrants? Is it about lower class people fighting uh, for justice? Like mm. what? <laughs> like kung fu, like kung fury. Like kung fury. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but political martial arts movies is not a new development. So yeah, like yeah. All the time, like the Wuxia movies, mm. Hero, Tiger and Dragon, and yeah. um, these were all political. I mean, the, the, the Bruce, Bruce Lee's kind of Chinese ethno-nationalism mm -hmm. is political. Yeah. Um, and even even in the film like Way of the Dragon, when he's gone, he goes to Rome mm -hmm. to, to rescue the the, uh, the the Chinese restaurant from the mafia, which is hilarious mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and a delight to watch. Um, he's still very nationalistic in his, you know, mm -hmm. Talk about it. and every day I practice kung fu, yeah. and um, yes. you're very popular today. I'm popular, the cuckoo. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's quite quite fitting that we move in this direction because um, the next topic I would like to um, to move towards to is um, Bruce Lee ideology.
like because aesthetics always have something to do with ideology, our representation of ideology probably sometimes. <laughs>